இருக்கு Good morning. I was like, "Mom." Sounds like we're having issues with my microphone capture today. I'm trying to limit how much background noise I have in the background. So, hello everybody. My name is Sean. I am Fire of Life 2018, and today this is the morning wake and bake. So, welcome in and we're going to chit-chat about whatever you feel like. In vibe and a little uh this morning. get mellow to start our day. We're going to have some happy positive generations to start our day. Everything going forward is happy and positive. Happy and positive. Today's happy uh affirmation generator is I believe in myself and my abilities. I believe in myself and my abilities and you should Every morning you wake up and tell yourself that you're great. Whatever you do do is better than if you hadn't done it at all. <clears throat> fresh bong hit this morning. I cleaned it out and ran up some fresh. I'm one of those like I smoke enough that I literally have a coffee grinder around my window. So that's a thing. But that's a thing. Did we hear any news today? I last I heard I saw a thing from Arizona no. Jersey they had a earthquake in New Jersey hope nobody out there is affected by that I don't know I haven't seen I really have not been getting the news like I have been I believe in my ability to believe that I have an ability that's the first step that is the first step you got to believe in yourself got to believe in yourself. How are you today Mr. HK Also thank you for subscribing. I don't know when you did that, but I did notice yesterday that you subscribed and I, I appreciate that. I think New Jersey earthquake was minimal. That's good. But still, such a rare one. I mean, they I saw the news stories of people talking about they saw the, the Statue of Liberty teetering. Can you imagine what kind of like image that would be at this stage in our world? Like the Statue of Liberty fell over? Like, oh my god. I might literally move to Canada if the statue of statue of fell over. How's Miss uh, Kiwi today? I know who you are, but I don't want to say your name on channels. HK, he uh, the super sweet Kiwi is um, the life friend too. Thanks for being here. You're up kind of early on a Sunday. Hope to join the morning wake and bake. Are you partaking with us this morning? I feel like the older I get, the uh less I sleep. Probably the pain, the back pain keeps me up. It's not like one of those things. Not that I've ever really been one of those people just gets up and it's happy and chipper but I don't sleep either like as a whole, as a whole I probably only get 4 or 5 hours and that's always been fine for me. <laughs> Ugh, I'm awake and vape today but possibly a later bake. <laughs> What's the difference in awake and vape and awake and vape? I'm finding sleep more on the couch than on the bed. Ugh, that can't be good for your back. Well, I guess it depends on what kind of mattress you have. You think it's better to sleep on the sofa? Wow, maybe you should invest in a nicer mattress. Cuz it like sofas aren't designed to be sleep on, right? And that big leather one y'all have. I'm sure it's comfy, but I imagine it's hard to get out of. Talk about couch lock. <laughs> so, We are going to let's talk about what we're doing in the garden today. I've got tomatoes that got to go in. I've got cucumbers that have to go in. I have pepper plants that have to go in. However, um it's still cold. Like we're getting to Monday as they're calling for it to be almost freezing tonight and I would hate to all those little seedling plants that I have. 
Yes, there are ads because I um, am a monetary person. I've actually made $15 off the stream in the three years I've been doing it. <laughs> uh, I mean, it takes, it's a long road, right? It, it's a long road traveling from there to here. So, yeah. Uh, that's, that's a thing. We, we could not do it without the support of the people who are coming in. You can see me in the little square, but you're still suffering the ads. Well, I mean, if it makes you feel better, those ads actually support the channel. Like, you watching that ad does make me, like, a seventh of a cent. <laughs> the seventh of a cent. I mean, also, if you'd like to avoid the ads, if you, I believe if you subscribe to my channel, you don't have to watch the ads, but you do have to pay real money to watch my content. <laughs> I know, like, as the capitalist person that I am, it's like, I don't care uh, if I make money off the stream or not. Like, I'm, I'm, especially this morning, waking big, I'm really, like, I would be sitting here in regardless. Okay, super sweet Queeby. I know you're new to Twitch, you don't do Twitch or anything else, but it's like YouTube. It has ads. You can't skip them, but you can pay a subscription and, and you don't have to watch the ads anymore. The ads support my channel otherwise. And I forgot what I was talking about either. Probably that you were... Um... Well, nobody likes ads. Really. <laughs> do you already follow the channel? I'm not sure if it's follow or enabled. You have the follow button on your... It's free. You might, I might have it enabled follower ads. You might get less ads if you're a follower. I know you get access to the cool... Uh, I think you have to be a subscriber to get it. My custom designed emotes. that float around dust green. I personally love... Bouncy, bouncy. Who knows what you missed? I know! Um, okay, ads. But I don't like that it just plays over top of you talking. Well, that's fair. Um, the reason is that I have it set up to automatically play the ads. Because Twitch has a thing that is called pre-roll ads. Where you would have to watch an ad to get into my stream. If I didn't play an ad every 30 minutes. So, I mean, technically, I could just sit here. But then there's also the, ooh, if I would like to continue hearing Sean say things and not, you know, have to listen to the ads and miss this content, I could just subscribe to his channel and I would not have that problem. And it's much, I get much more revenue off the subscription than I do the ads. So I'm kind of glad that you find that annoying and I hope that other people enjoy my content follows the stream. <laughs> I hate that it's a capitalist business model, but it is the one we work with, isn't it? I am often quoted as saying that we deal with the situation that we want, not the one we have. And if I didn't have to make money to, like, exist in the world, I wouldn't. I don't care. I, like, I think healthcare should be free. And that's really the only thing that really, like, it's a huge cost in my life. There. Like, dentistry? How much, like, getting your teeth worked on? So much money. Like, how many um, ounces of product does one have to sell to fix your teeth? I just uh, wished we lived in a country that didn't measure how much our health is worth in a dollar value. Like, people in the office of whatever office, they'll get that government health plan, and we all wonder why they live to 112. We have the medical technology to fix literally anything. Well, I mean, like, they are printing organs in Blacksburg. They are cloning genetically modified pigs with the idea of harvesting pig organs to put into humans who have successfully done it. There's a guy in North Carolina somewhere that got a pig kidney, I think, and was out of the hospital in two weeks. Fresh kidney. Printed you a kidney. 
Can you imagine that if we switched over to butchering pigs and all the organs that the pigs had while we butchered them for meat could then be used to transplant into human? It's going to have a surplus of organs. Like, that you're going to be able to go to the supermarket and purchase a liver, a, a lung, heart. Ah. It's a scary world to live in. But that's what I, I like. I, I think I could be empathetic with the older crowd of America looking at that way. Like, the way I feel about the future when everything is like Star Trek, where it's robots and lasers and phasers and scanners and interfaces, screens, as opposed to human technology, or like the, the human interface is probably how my mother's generation feels about Twitch, how it feels about TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, like all these things. They're like, wow, all these things are kind of awful. But I think the rest of us also think they're awful. Like, is social media an addiction that America won't let? We all know it's an addiction. We all know it's bad. But none of us are getting off. Everybody's like, oh yeah, I'm taking a day. I'm getting off of this, like, for a day. Okay. Then what? Get back on it tomorrow and you think it'll help. It's okay. The world, like, I, as I, whenever I have anxiety about the ills and chills of the world, I often remind myself that every generation has these. I mean, like, you think about the 60s and the flower power movements and the civil revolutions that we've been through. America has a million things all the time. We are the ones with this sense of urgency, sense of pending doom. Must. It's, it's a mandate that we must act now. Hey, Silver. How's it going? Oh, you call me FOL. And I was like, what? Uh -huh, fire of love. You're so cute. FOL. I kind of like that. I, I don't know why it makes me feel like I'm a rapper. Like, I'm the original FOL, yo. <laughs> it's going pretty good. I mean, I stayed up so late last night playing by uh, Final uh, Furthest Frontier. Like, it's the most addictive game, and it's... I don't know why. Definitely don't know why. I'm not sure if you're still going by Greed Gamer. Right? That's... that's what That was the original iteration. You talk about a... Talk, talk about a throwback. Green Gamer made more sense with the, the green theme in my YouTube. <laughs> Wonder what happened to the other... 17. Uh, have I gotten stoned enough that I said something about 2017 and I don't remember? I can see myself running for office one day and somebody using these is like, look at this guy. He's a crazy person. And I, me looking dead to the camera and being like, I want a crazy person, don't you? Is that what you want to run your country? Is somebody that would be entertaining? will be entertaining and then actually still protect your um, like you know social rights and stuff I can I can certainly be entertaining oh because I am the 2018th firefly that's so funny um uh, the reason I picked 2018 was because it happened to be 2018 I started the channel I am original and green at least, and you know, as somebody who doesn't remember things, I often have to do little triggers like that to be like, how long have you been doing this? Oh, right, I started in 2018, this was one million. And the Green Gamer thing was um, a reference to Dungeons and Dragons when they did the Green Flame. And, like, if you notice my offline screen, it's still just a spinning green flame, because I like it. And 
it was it was supposed to be Dungeons and Dragons E we started out. Like the, this this podcast this stream, this whatever this is, has gained so many iterations. Like if you want to go check out the YouTube, it's where all the stuff gets uploaded to on the other one. It's Fire of Life 2018 as well. And I mean, I've streamed a hundred different games. I've stream like I've did political talk casts, I did um any talk shows. We tried to do a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Um yeah, we, we have been trying to do things on the stream for quite some time. Just, I love doing new stuff. Um, it's cool. I need, I really need to start editing videos. I think I, I love to watch things grow and I love to watch things burn, which is weird. And I have a wood stove and I feel like that I could probably like put up a 24 hour live stream of just like the fire burning. And I, I feel like people would watch that. I bet if I put lo-fi lo music in the background and fire burning foreground. this is it <laughs> but the reason I haven't done that is because I live in rural America and we have limited bandwidth like there is a limit to the amount of band of, of megabytes I am allowed to use per month remember when cell phones came out and you had a limited number of minutes that is basically how I am with the blows my mind that they're allowed to do that but hey we all voted against net neutrality right not, I don't think that has anything to do with the neutrality, but I'm definitely gonna um, just just use that as a scapegoat blanket term for everything that's wrong with the internet. <laughs> I simply cannot imagine 2017. Me either. That would be a very loud. <laughs> <laughs> nice! Yay! Subscriber perk, he got to use the emote. So much laughing though. Oh my god, you're probably right. Probably right. I'd be I'd be tripping myself out. I'd get all my own humor. Every joke would land. Whoa! It'd be like, I wanna be the keynote screw I wanna be the keynote speaker to a group of me's. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that would be so funny. Just everything you said, everybody would be laughing. Everybody would be... I have discovered that I get a free monthly sub with my Prime membership. Yes, you do. And that means you make me money instead of Jeff Bezos. How about that? You should come over here every month and redo that just to give me the, just give me the money that is included with your subscription. Anybody else out there who's got Prime, if you link it, to your Twitch, you get one free subscription with Prime, because Twitch owns, because uh, Amazon owns Twitch, so it doesn't really cost them anything either way. I guess it does actually cost them something, because I do get like a penny or something a month for it. And I think you get access to the, the emotes for that. I'm not sure, if I think Prime subs are different than like paid subs. Not just laughing though, cackle. A cackle, ooh. I mean, I can subdue the cackle. If it's like, if there was two thousand people in a room, I probably wouldn't be cackling. Just be like, "Whoa, uh, that was funny." Well, I'm trying, but it says I'm not available yet. I think because I just linked. Uh, -uh. Amazon's probably got some sketchy way to get out of paying that money too. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. I think Amazon's got some sketchy way. That they're probably some stupid too. I was trying to put in the chat box I was doing at Sidetrack by having to start to stream. I think it'd be cool to be able to see the chat on. Let's see if it works. Now somebody has to type something in the chat for me. Oh, hey, there it is. Now we can all see the chat on the screen. Look at that. I can imagine all uh, 2018 Fire of Life Battle Royale. I mean, I'm not really like a fighter, those people. So I feel like a whole room full of me would be just very pacifist. Maybe, maybe snarky. 
I, like I hate myself sometimes, so I can certainly see how I'd be like, oh my god, I'm such a douche. But then I mean, I don't know, I'm also the kind of guy that if you call me out on being a douche, I'm, yeah, I, I was a douche. <laughs> I, I call them intrusive thoughts. Whenever I'm like, yeah, I did something really awful. I had an intrusive thought, and it won. Ugh. Ugh. Um, doesn't have to be fighting battle royale, just a battle of wits or baking skills. Oh my god! An Iron Chef cook-off with two, uh, 2,000, Sean. That would, y'all have some good food. You'd be eating that day. It would just be uh, 2017 times more delightful. I don't know. I mean, like, anything in massive quantities is not good. Like, everybody loves dogs, right? But would you really want to be in a room with 2,017 dogs? Did you see you in 17,000, uh, like 2,000 dogs? I feel like you would get bumped and licked and clobbered all over. Like it would be, it would be, it would be cute for like a minute. Okay, my friend is not a dog. I mean, sometimes I'm a dog. <laughs> sometimes, but I'm just saying. Um, just like if it like good things I'm just trying to think of a room like it, how many good things that you would not want 2,000 of like I love cakes I would not like someone to show up with 2,000 cakes one day because I would never be able to eat all that and they would just go to waste I, I don't even have enough friends to call to eat 2,000 cakes Yes, everything in moderation. Moderna, Sean. Just call me a vaccine. You know, anybody who wants to join this in the Discord could also just join the Discord. I am in the Discord live, by the way. Although, I do enjoy the chat interaction because that helps me out a great deal as far as stats and moderation. Oh, moderation. Oh, 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 she's so witty, you guys. So oh, witty. Oh, so witty and pretty and bright. What was that from? Um, Julie Andrews. Is that the music? Free 2,000 cakes. Time to get some ice cream and have a party for the town. I think Alta Vista could not eat 2,000 cakes. I mean, somebody like so like I have definitely worked for lots of nonprofits in uh, in my genre of life, and free food often brings out people, but there is always leftover. Food. I've never ever been to a place where like the universe. I just that, that train of thought derailed. Choo choo derailed. Hashtag marijuana. That's why we love this. So pretty, so pretty, and yay! Ha, 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 ha. I wish it would show different colors for different. Like the chat that I see, each one of you guys has a different color for your name, and like HK has got a special icon. He's got two special icons actually. He is the founder, so he gets a badge for being one of the first Prime or paid subscribers to my channel. And he has a badge for the Prime Gaming Badge. Includes a free monthly, so he's got Prime Twitch. Nice. Nice. It tells you it tells me all about you. Like I know all your things and thing. I can tell when I get a first time chatter, it pops up a big old square, like, woo, it's a first time chatter. Big deal, big deal. Which is cool. I mean I encourage people to chat. That's why we're here, chatting in the chat chat. That's why I put it up on the screen. Is this weird? Should I move my, my box over? My my face more? Balance it a little. Bigger chat. How about this? Is this better? Don't we, don't we love that I can do that? I th this is so much fun to me. <laughs> Playing around with the random stuff. I have definitely spent way too much time just... Oh my goodness. 2,000 Little Debbie Cakes. I'm pretty sure that's how you 
spontaneously get diabetes. Right, true that. Although you're thinking Little Debbie's cake. When I said cake, I was thinking like double deckered cakes, like a birthday cake. That's what I was thinking. I said cakes. I made you 2,000 birthday cakes. Happy birthday! And then bye. Like here, that, as the foreclothes, forklifts come in and unload your cheap, cheap, cheap. <sighs> Thousand cakes delivered. For free. Enjoy. I'd be like, um, that's a lot of cake. Cake body ocean. I probably can't do that because I'm sure it's um, copyrighted. It's going to flag me. Everything escalates quickly on the stream. The stream is viral. The stream is living. <laughs> I mean, we've actually been pretty lucky that we haven't had anybody come into the stream and be hateful. I haven't had any spam. I'm, I'm quite impressed. The other thing that, you, that could be done would be roof diving into 2000 k Ooh, that is good. That would be fun. That would be... That would be like a YouTube viral video. I'm sure you could make some money off that. Like, hey, think of the, think of the headline. I jumped off a roof into 2,000 cakes, and this is what happened. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to bake 2,000 cakes. How has this happened? Where's Where did this come from? How did this happen? I've got to bake 2,000 cakes now. Jesus. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. They best all be infused, at least. Good God, how much weed do you think that would take? Oh! Sometimes I really get like flabbergasted I see people taking d dabs in vape pits because I see a dab and I know how much plant matter goes into a dab to get like you're only dabbing like the little tiny tendrils that come off of the flower like you've basically reduced all of the plant matter and just took the THC from a whole plant and put into a tiny little like half ounce of resin and I'm like it's so much plant matter that's just wasted and lost and processed and yikes all to the effort of let's get the highest and most concentrated intense high we could get and I mean like when do we get into the point that marijuana is no longer like healthy and good for us because we've made it so genetically modified You know, like, it's not, but it, it's genetically modified to be super hallucinogenic, super stony, super high. When I really feel like you need the CBD to balance out, like, to get the good benefits of marijuana, you need a nice balanced strain. So you feel the euphoria, you feel the happiness, you feel the pain remedies, you feel the, the good parts, but you don't get super stoned. Like, I mean, maybe that's just because I'm like a regular everyday user for my back pain, and I would not want to spend my whole day just stoned out of my mind. Like, I could take some of the prescription pills for my back pain and get more loopy than I do from a good balanced marijuana. I definitely can't stay stony baloney. I would get nothing done. I am much more productive in a physical sense while stoned. Like if I'm doing bags of mulch or out in the field harvesting or whatever, stoned is the way to be doing physical labor. It's just move this crap from this thing to another. like one simple task that you just have to do repetitively over and over and over until it's done. That's a, that's a stony balloon task if you ask me. But higher cognitive functions, like you start doing things like, oh, let me sit down and write this essay. I might write it stoned, but I would proofread it, not stoned. Like 
edit it today. I'm looking for some creative vibes. I might sit down and write it stone, and I would edit it not stone. Make sure that everything is normal and kosher and dotted and crossed and punctuated appropriately. I know, it's surprising. You might pro proofread or proofread better stone. I feel like th at this point, I don't proofread. I let an AI do it. I don't, I don't, I don't proofread things anymore. I let some higher intelligence proofread things for me, and I just make choices about how I want to change things. Like, I get the choice between wording it this way or this way. Uh, this way. I word it this way. This way. Uh, this way. You know, I want to make sure that I'm conveying the right message in what I'm sending, that all the punctuation and grammar, all that can be handled by AI. Thanks. Yeah, you're not needed anymore, Carrie. AIs have replaced you. Chat GPT can just write stuff for me. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy that. I've written um, letters of recommendation. I've had had to do resumes. I've had it do um, reviews, evaluations. All you do is ask it, you like tell, tell it to do what you do, and then you go back and you proofread it like you would anyway. And then there you go. Like, it just takes all the hard work of physically putting together all this. I hate to be the one who's like English, but silly. Oh, yeah. Totally. I mean, it, it, like, it won't write you a resume perfectly. You definitely are gonna have to go back and edit it and fix it, like. But it uses a lot of really good corporate bur buzzwords based on your job descriptions. Like, it takes um, job descriptions from the internet. So, like, you know, you can search for whatever position and just search job description, and it'll it'll tell you what basically what you did in your job. Which is, I would always say, if you're writing a resume in the first place, that's one of my favorite tips: is Google your job description that you had at the time, and then just copy and paste that in there, and then maybe fluff it or edit it a little bit for. Um, like specific job requirements like you need to write a resume towards the job you're applying to so you know but you can delete stuff and add stuff and then shorten it but I, I, I love to get the information about what jobs I was doing I mean you heard about it passing the bar and stuff right like have we not have you not I don't know if you're not keeping up with the AI revolution but we're all about to be replaced by robots and I'm thinking within our lifetimes I'd, I would be lucky. I think we'd be lucky if it's not in the next 20 years. Fair. Where we're all just like, wow. Universal basic incomes. All the robots are making all the goods. and We don't, we don't have anything to do? Hmm. If we, get, if we get the nuclear fusion thing up and running. If they get the solid state battery thing perfected. Which, this whole new silicon battery situation. That looks out great. I mean, if they... And I mean, like, in human humanoid robotics are already at an impressive level. Like, they make drinks. They already they already make soups. Like, they already have replaced most kitchen people <laughs> with robots in some way, shape, fashion, or form that are like ninety percent accurate. And that's probably better than a human working in restaurants for years. To say that a human is ninety ninety percent accurate is that be that be strong. That'd be strong. Like you're talking about, each plate is 90% exactly the right the one before. Humans are way different. They just toss garnishes on there and stuff. Like sometimes don't even bother. Like the drizzles that drop on plates to make it look pretty are human, but when you put it in a machine, it's all that close. Like because it's exactly done the same thing over and over and over again. It's the same way. So usually only environmental factors are what cause it to be off at all. But anywho, if you think you combine those three things, like great batteries, free power, and humanoid robotics, where will we be in 20 years? You look at the state of what they are now and at the progression of their advancement. I don't know why they wouldn't. I mean, if we build a factory of humanoid robots. So like all we'd have to really do is build the first robot factory. Build a factory of robots that makes more robots, powered by nuclear fusion. Just unlimited prints out robots. 
I mean, I guess you'd probably have to make your second set of robots about the natural resources. So, like, you've run them into mining robots. Oh, wait, I think we're already doing that. I mean, the nuclear fusion thing is going to be the big... That's, that's going to be... Like, I'm fingers crossed for fusion, yo. We've, they've been telling us for 50 years that it's just around the corner. It's just around the corner. But they have successfully created a reaction that generated more power than it used for the first time ever in nuclear history. It's history, and that's recent history. So that was huge breakthrough. They had successfully found a way to make more energy out of it and take to create the reaction, which I believe is the whole premise. Because now you just have to scale it. So like, we can create and reproduce the reaction that creates more energy than it uses. Therefore, you just have to scale it. Even if it's only like one micro decibel of energy more than we had, scale it, make it bigger, faster, make it more fun. And, you know, funds for that'll happen anyway. Like, I don't know. I think we are, um, humanity has already envisioned its future. Have you seen Star Trek and Star Wars? Humanity has already envisioned its future. And I mean, I honestly think that we're at no better of a time in history to look back at how Americans have defined its future and how visibly representation that future that we are voting for now is actually, like, think about it. If you, the Trump side, I hate to even say his name, the Voldemort side should be, it's, it's like Star Wars. They are, they are the Senate. They are... Like, do you remember the Star Wars saga, how that got started? Like, they started from a democratic republic of galactic people, and some fascist dictator took it over, and that's how you got Star Wars. And then you got Star Trek, where it's, like, a committee of people. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about li 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 uh, literary allegory. Not actual time frames. Literary allegory. There's your new word of the day. I think I might have even learned that from Super Sweet Kiwi's mom. I think I may have coined that term from her. <laughs> Literary allegory. I believe she was the one who taught me what a little allegory. Meaning that we are taking a book and giving it a figurative metaphor life. Literary allegory. I feel like I learned so much from your mother. Fair. English wise. One of my favorite teachers still to this day. Despite how many troubles we had at the time, I look back now and I'm like, oh, she was pretty care. She care a lot about us. And that's important in a teacher. We had a lot of great teachers. We were very lucky people. I say that often. Like that I am super lucky and super blessed to be in the world and place that I am and I need to remind myself of that. I had great parents. I grew up in rural, small town America. Like of all the rest of the places in the world I could have grown up. And everybody gives me a hard time for being country and simple sometimes, but... I'm not sure I'm mad about that. I like that I trust people. I like that I can hope for the deal. Because I grew up with good people. I know they exist. I know they're out there. I know where they live. You know, like... So it's sometimes in these really hard, stressful times where everybody's divisive and divisive about everything, it's always important to remember that they're just usually too busy doing good things to complain about stuff. Or to be vocal about politics. I mean, like, I know a lot of good people work their fingers to the grindstone every day that 
and you're like, wow, this thing is affecting your life specifically, like you work for a government agency, like this, it's huge. Like politics is definitely like they're you basically you get to vote for your bosses, and that's there. Most of them are very distracted. They're not even really paying attention. They're letting it go. They're just like it doesn't matter. They're they're doing what they can. They're controlling their universe, doing good deeds, doing good works for their selves. And they're pretty amazing people. It's unfortunate that the loud ones are often obnoxious. Because it's loud, it's obnoxious to be loud. Like it's almost a, I don't want to say synonym. I feel like obnoxious and loud might be some dictionary. And that's all we ever see. Like, I was at dinner the other day, Easter. My Republican-leaning uncle uh, is having conversations with my mother about Trump. I, I'm not, I don't have those conversations. I want to keep And uh, my mother is trying very hard to Tim to not vote for Trump. And he says something along the lines, well, everybody believes that he's the right answer. And I'm like, Arr! I just want, I, I didn't say anything. I let it go. I wasn't involved in the conversation. I just wanted to like raise my hand. Not, 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 not everybody. Just in case you didn't know, but it wasn't worth the struggle or the drama or the, he just, I, what, like, <sighs> did you ever get the, Bone. I feel like I've been pushing a, that rock up a hill for 20 years. Bone. Anyway, what was today's positive affirmation? I got real sad. Hold on. Today's positive affirmation. Uh, I believe in myself and my abilities. There you go. I know what I can get done. I know I have a lovely self-sustaining farm that when the world blows up I will be toasting marshmallows on my front porch I'm sure we in speaking of world blowing up news has anybody been keeping up with the solar uh, eclipse I mean this might be the I smoke too much weed paranoia but it seems like they're making a, a huge deal out of this whole eclipse thing I mean, granted, it's 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 a cool event. It's a thing, but like, I work for well, I don't work for. I volunteer for a preparedness organization, and they have all kinds of plans for like things that happen during the eclipse. And it's a lot like disaster survival in general. Like, you need to make sure you have food, water, shelter, kind of thing. I believe in you. It's in yourself, right? Thanks. Thanks for that. I needed it. But I mean, that's the the other question is believing in yourself for what? Like, you can believe I could I do have the audacity to believe that I can really do thing, but it's like where do you set your goals? Where do you set your focuses? Who decides what best direction to go? And you're like, "Well, you do." But that's silly. I don't know all the answers. I don't have all the information to make all the answers. Why would I know all that? Sometimes I feel like there really should be a higher authority that I wish there was. I would love to say there was. Like, I would love to have faith and be like, oh, yeah, there's some giant being up there guiding our lives. But the logic circuit in me tells me that's not plausible. I do, however, think that you don't really like I don't like atheists just kind of believe that like that's the end when you die I really believe that the whole electrical impulses in your brain are still like I know it's just electricity and I know it's just but I also know that when a person dies like they've had people on that are about to die on 
beds that are weighted, so like you know something leaves the body or a person dies. I think it has to be something to do with like the electrical influences in your brain, and I really believe that whatever you believe happened to you when you die does. Like your brain manifests it, because like even if you think of like the Christian heaven where everybody's like, oh, it's golden ropes and all your family members and stuff are, are there. The versions of your family members are not, like, the, the ones that you have in your brain, like, the perfect versions of your family members are not who those people are. Especially if somebody's been dead for 20 years. You barely even remember them by the time you've died, and then you're going to meet them again. And you're like, oh, but that's the perfect version of you. So isn't that, like, a representation of, like, your electrical impulses representing your perfect world for you? Because nobody's perfect world is the same. Like, how could you design a place that is perfect for everyone? That's the fun part. You can go all the distance because you know you have someone. Ah, I can go the distance and defeat the Huns. Let's get down to business. That's the other one. I don't know. I think I got it wrong. I think I got it wrong. Maybe I just uh, I copied it up. We've been saying we're gonna do karaoke in this channel forever. Okay, my, my friend Sharon's saying she's gonna get on here too. One of these days we're gonna get on and do some karaoke one night. I did it during the first weeks of the pandemic. Like there's a, a Facebook group that does live karaoke. Well, I guess they did. I'm not sure if they're still doing a thing, but. That was always fun. I mean, there is something different about like sitting around your house by yourself drinking and watching somebody than hanging out with your friends while somebody sings bad karaoke in the background. The bad karaoke in the background is not the feature presentation. Like if you're watching a stream, there's going to be somebody on the stream caterwauling into a microphone. You know, you're going to see them. But you're just sitting there watching the screen. Just you and that. There's nobody else distracting you from that awful person singing on the screen. I've been to a lot of karaoke, and I don't think that I'm, like, the best singer in the world. But there's definitely some people that have sang songs, and I'm thinking that whoever wrote that just rolled over. If, even if they're still alive, they don't know why they just rolled. They just uh, 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 like they just destroyed that song. And if you aren't drunk and have no distractions, you are just forced to watch that awful song, and that's that's not good. Nobody likes it. Well, you mixed two movies there, but it turned out way better than expected. It's called a mashup. <laughs> Didn't you see Pitch Perfect? I love Pitch Perfect. That was great. Indeed. So, we're coming up here on our hour mark. We've got about 10 minutes left to go. Does anybody have any topics they'd like to cover today specifically? You, you, I talked about it yesterday. How about some life advice? Anybody have any problems they want me to help them solve? I'm really great with life advice. I love to tell people how to live their lives. I'm trying not to do it as much because I realize it's annoying, but if you ask for it, I can't be. All according to... Wow, I'm never going to be able to pronounce that. I want to be like... Kikaku? And I have no idea what Kikaku is. Just make me, just make me say something dirty on the, on the TV. Sounds kind of... Okay. is the Japanese word that means plain. It can also refer to a strategy that outlines actions or goals to achieve desired outcomes and involves careful organization, consideration, and patience. Kaku. 
Am I, am I saying it right? All according to plan. Kikaku. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's much better. I often say that all things have a plan. Or No, my favorite saying probably in that spectrum is everything happens the way it's supposed to. Because you can't really say everything happens for a reason. Everything, you know, nothing, it, like, I, I hate to set the expectation for anyone that life is going to be. There are always going to be setbacks. There are always going to be struggles. But that's the way it's supposed to be. I have heard the theory why bad things happen to good people if there's a god kind of thing. Like, you're like, why is there... Why bad things happen to good people? And... I would say maybe it's the law of unintended consequences. So, like, what if there was a deity up there trolling all the things and trying to do good things for good people... There, I mean, like, he's made a system of rules and laws that we all live by, so if he has an action, or if they, if they have an action, then wouldn't it also have an equal and opposite reaction in the parameters that they themselves have set for this world? Like, imagine a game creator. Like, would you go into your own game and break all the rules? Why would you make those rules that way in the first place if that was the case? So it's a law of unintended consequences. Somebody prayed for action A, and he deemed them worthy of that action, but action A made them hurt you. Action, action B happened as a result, and it burnt your house down. Like, this person was begging for a promotion at their insurance company, and they like, ah, oh, I just need one really good case to like like make myself look good and that'll get my promotion and your house burns down that's their really good case so sucks for you good for them same way you cannot make a heaven for everyone ow to the logic of it the logic of it all Endwalker essentially proved that video games are not facts. <laughs> I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. They're they they have the same theory, I guess. Endwalker is like you you have to um my one of my favorite country sayings is you have to have the rain to make the sunshine special. Eternal happiness would be a misery. And even eternal suffering would be a misery. I often have problem like like you would get used to that too. It's it's human humans are ad adaptable. They're very adaptable. So having a balance between happiness and sadness is a good thing, even if sometimes the scales might tilt on the other side more. Right. I mean, I think that's the struggle of life, is you want to try to make sure that your your scales tip a little bit better on the good side. You really want to have more wins than L's, but you're going to have some L's. That's just life. And the way you deal with life and how those L's face you are the only controllables you have in the You can only control your own actions and can only be held accountable for your own actions. I've been in situations many times, um, and especially recently in these volunteer scenarios where I'm going out to disasters and making decisions about things that we don't know in the future, you're using your best guess. And then you have to later, like, account for those actions. And you're like, well, at the time, we didn't know. Well, at the time, we didn't know. And we chose to do these three things based on this information, and... It is what it is. Like, mistakes were made, and if I had known what I know now, then I would not have made the same decisions I made then, but I didn't know it at the time. So, 
I made the best decisions I made with the and that's always been most time it's like what how are you gonna argue that like the end we I always say keep notes <laughs> CYA that's the trick there C Y A. So what do we think? Should I keep doing these? Do we, do we like these hour chats we have every morning? It seems like the weekends are good days for it. I catch good, good turnout on the weekend. Should I put something in it? What would you like to see? Do you want me to do comedy? Uh, prepare a statement? Should I do a monologue? Sing my own intros? Do we like the, the positive uh, affirmations? In hindsight, whatever I choose led me here. So even if I have a choice, make a better one. Might not. Yeah, well, I mean, we're done in like two minutes anyway ish you know I don't I don't really count the clock like that but I uh, I'm only aiming for an hour because it's I don't it's just, I feel like me listening to me talk for an hour is I can't believe you all did that enough that's impressive to listen to me for a whole hour I, I obviously my analytics say most people don't listen to me for a And they tell you all the time in these stream videos to like not make content if it's not content. Like don't just sit here staring at your screen, clicking buttons, playing video games. You have to talk and engage people with things. So it's, might as well only do an hour. It's really up to me though. It's the fun part of streaming. See, truth, it is up to me to put the effort into it to make it happen for you. But you're a subscriber. You could shape the channel to see what you want to channel. What do you? What kind of stuff do you watch otherwise? Like you watch people play video games. Just to talk for an hour. I could talk to a fence post in the dark. That's fair. But you guys have been super helpful being in the chat, giving me things to talk about. I did do one the other day where nobody was in it, and I still managed to talk for a whole hour. But I don't know if it was all that entertaining. But to be fair, that's what got me started with these chats in the first place, was that I get up in the morning and I smoke and I'm pacing back and forth, bitching about the news, being mean, and just like, oh god, this is awful! So I was like, I need to start finding a better way to start my day than sitting there reading up the news all day. A tight hour is better than a meandering two to three hours. I mean, I guess it depends on how much time you want to spend editing your videos. Like, technically, if I spent two to three hours, like, recording myself play a video game and then just delete out all the parts I'm not talking, that would be... That would shorten the videos a great deal. But I haven't done any of that yet, either. I mean, I need to... It's I need to find a video editing software that I can play around with and see what works. But this is the wrong time of year to be sitting here on the computer all day. I am a farmer. It is spring. I have many things to do outside. But then, once my plants get in the ground, I will have many weeks of watching plants grow. You know, I do a couple hours of maintenance every day, but I do have more free time once I've gotten the garden prep done. You know, a whole lot of mulching and a whole lot of trim, a whole lot of wheat, a whole lot of tilling, and a whole lot of hoeing. That was before. But, yeah. Maybe pick up something new to try every day and see what sticks. Right, but I, I think I have to do I have to a smaller sample size than every day. But maybe I'll change. Maybe I'll take segments. You want to like, today's Monday. We're going to talk about politics. Today's Tuesday. We're going to talk about video games. Today's Wednesday. We'll talk about weather. <laughs> Thursday. We'll talk about uh, technology. Friday. We'll do. Science. Science Friday. They'll listen to Science Friday. Maybe. Be like, uh, yeah. At least it's topics. That gave me something. I should have wrote that down. I should probably write that down right now. If you don't write it down, you'll forget. 
So, Monday. What's that news? Tuesday. Um, games. Wednesday. Weather. Thursday. Tech. Friday science. We'll talk about my my favorite. Prior, I'll start. I don't know. We'll see. I wrote some things down. Or maybe not every day. Just shake it up and shake it up to twice a week. Well, that's why I worry about with the every day because the marketing sample size. But I think the uh, consistent time frame is what they tell me is supposed to be key. So I'm going to try to keep that from 9.30 to 10.30 every day because I have this meeting that runs from 9 to 9.30 every day. So I can usually just while I'm listening to the meeting, I'll be setting up my stream. And then I can sit here and actually start my day because I don't like to work. I do... Um, Yes. Again, thanks everybody for being here. It's been a great day. We're going to think about this. Don't forget if you guys have not um, joined the Discord yet. I know there's some people in here who are not talking, but are in here. Uh, curses. All my stuff. Send the link to the Discord. That way you can be part of the chat in the Discord if you want, or I definitely send out alerts on the Discord. So. There's the Discord. Hi, I'm Green Gamer, and this is my channel. There is the YouTube. That will take you to Fire of Life, I hope. I intend to upload all these, so if you missed the first part or missed the ending part or wanted to see any of this, by all means, go over and check out the YouTube. And I will put more stuff over there. Please like, subscribe, and follow if you like the stuff. Otherwise, I will not assume, assume you do not like it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Damn it, I forgot to record it again. Later, taters. <laughs>